Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're gonna to go through the steps on how to install Windows 10 from a USB drive. But before we do that, please always remember to subscribe to my channel, Digital Byte Computing, and click on that notification bell to be kept up to date as I release new videos. So ensuring you've got your Windows 10 installer, in our case, we're gonna be using an ISO, we're then gonna be going and mounting it and making this thing bootable so that you can then read it on a computer. And uh, we're gonna jump into my computer right now and show you how to do that. So my name is Emilio and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And right now we're gonna go through the steps on how to get this Windows 10 ISO, uh, make it bootable on a USB drive. So this Windows 10 ISO, I've downloaded this from the Microsoft website. You may have gotten that from an MSDN or from a different source, but whatever you've got, you need to have a um, an ISO first and foremost. You can you really use any form of ISO that you want uh, from another operating system. It could even work with a different version of Windows, but we're doing this with Windows 10. 5.2 gig big, so making sure that you've got a USB drive that is that size or bigger. I would recommend something that is eight gig. In my case, I've chosen a 16 gig USB. You don't have to do anything to the USB drive. Plug it in, make sure that you can see it within Windows Explorer, and uh, we can now get that onto there. Now, if you just go and copy this Windows 10 file into here, if you open up this file like you uncompress it, and you copy the contents into here, that will not work. You'll have the files on a USB stick, but then you plug it in and try to boot from it and it will not work. So what we're gonna be using is that we're using a tool called Rufus. Rufus is completely free. Uh, you can download Rufus by going into uh, Google, typing in Rufus, R-U-F-U-S, and then downloading it from their, from their website and then uh, running it from your computer. Now I'm doing this on a computer that, um, you can really do this from any computer, including the computer that you're going to upgrade, um, but we're doing this from a, a separate Windows 10 computer, uh, and then just making that USB stick bootable that way. So um, well, let's go ahead and open up Rufus right now. Uh, we're presented with something right up front, which is really, really good news. It's uh, already picked up my 16 gig USB stick automatically. It's already found the brand, Toshiba, et cetera, et cetera. If yours has not shown up in here, maybe click on the drop down right here and then navigate to your USB stick. Uh, if it's not even showing up there, uh, make sure that it's showing up within Windows Explorer. You could have a problem with the USB stick. It could be formatted incorrectly. So the first step is to get that USB stick uh, visible from within the Rufus interface right here. The second part is under the boot selection area. It says disk or image, please select. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to navigate to the ISO file um, of uh, our operating system that we're wanting to install. So let's just go ahead and click on select. And this is the ISO that we're going to be using. This is the Windows 10 ISO and selecting open. We'll do a quick scan of the image, making sure that the image is uh, correct, that it is not corrupted or anything like that. And it will now say ready, making sure that it's saying using image and then the name of your ISO file. If this has not worked, if that ISO has not been uh, detected, if it's not showing up under boot selection right here, go and double check the ISO. The ISO may not be correct, it could be corrupted, something may have gone wrong. So making sure that your ISO is picked up and that it's listed right within here. Um, the other things we're gonna change is under partition scheme, we're gonna select MBR, making sure that target system is BIOS. And then the volume name is really the name that the USB drive is going to be getting. So at the moment it's called 16 GB USB. Uh, it'll now rename it to that. So we can leave that as default or you can give it another name if you if you so choose to. And then we leave the rest as is. We wanna keep it as NTFS. Uh, status is ready. So now we can click on start. It's gonna give you a little warning that all the data on that USB stick will be deleted, which is completely fine. So it's deleting the partition. Now it's formatting it, creating the master boot record. You'll see that it's automatically under here, if I go into here, um, it's now renamed it. So it's renamed my uh, USB drive to, uh, it's under E drive to this, and it's now starting to copy all of the contents um, of that ISO into this particular USB drive. So it's also making it bootable and making sure that it all works correctly. So this process will take a little bit of time depending on the size of the ISO. This ISO is quite large, so we'll let that run. It may take you know maybe 20 minutes, something like that, um, and then we'll check back once that is finished. So if everything has worked, that should now be completed. We can now click on close, exit out of Rufus. Your USB stick should now be ready. You can go and navigate it. You can see all of the files that are within here. 
And uh, the next step is really is just to remove it from this computer, unmount it, you know, remove it safely and then plug it in to the computer that we're going to be installing it. What we'll do is we'll go into our laptop right now and we will boot it into the BIOS and then make sure that the BIOS has a USB listed as the boot medium, the primary boot medium. So let's just cross over to that other computer right now. So here we are on our computer. This is a standard Lenovo uh, laptop. It's a bit of an older one. So I've gone into the BIOS. Now in my case on the Lenovo computer, I'm pressing F1 to get into my BIOS. Your computer will probably be different if you have a different brand, a different make, a different model, if it's a desktop, if it's a laptop. Um, maybe when you're booting it up, you've got a little um, you know, screen there that shows you press this key to get into the BIOS or into the setup. But getting into here, all we wanna just do is just ensure that it's going to boot from our USB, okay? Now again, every section will be different depending on your version, but this is just a really high level overview. So under boot here, I've just got my priority order and my first boot will be USB HDD or USB hard drive. So just ensuring that that is on there uh, will ensure that the hard drive or that the USB is actually booted first before going to the hard drive that is locally on your computer. And if everything works correctly, you should see on the top left corner, press any key to boot from the USB. And you do that. If you're seeing this uh, Windows logo, you're off to a good start. It means that the USB has been uh, found, that it's actually currently been read from the USB and that your process has now begun. You select the language to install. You know, if you're leaving it as default, you can do that. Time and currency. Uh, if you can tell from my dodgy accent, I'm from Australia. So I'm gonna set my English to be English Australia because we say words funny. Next, install now. So setup is now starting. So first things first is to now get the uh, Windows 10 installation uh, key, right? the product key. So you should have this, hopefully you do, you can put that in right now. The other option is you can select, I don't have a product key and you can then organize that later on. So for our purposes, we're just gonna say I don't have, but if you have one and it's readily available, go and put that license key in there right now. The next area is selecting the operating system you want to install. Now there are various different uh, flavors or versions of Windows 10 depending on what you actually need. The key will be dependent on the version that you've got. So if you've purchased Windows 10 Home, uh, then you select Windows 10 Home, all right? For my purpose, I'm gonna be using Pro, Windows 10 Pro, okay? That's the version that I have uh, acquired and I'm gonna select next. Now you may also not have all of those versions displayed. You could also just have a version that is relevant just to you based on your license key. So just be aware of that. So I accept the terms. Of course, I only accept them if you actually do accept them. So right here, you've got a couple of different options. You can select upgrade or custom. If we're looking at an upgrade, it just means that the previous version of Windows, let's say Windows 8.1, is gonna be upgraded to Windows 10 and installing that will keep all your files, settings, and applications. Or you can say custom and install Windows only. Uh, that will mean that it's a clean, fresh copy of Windows 10. Now the benefit, I generally recommend doing a fresh install because then it's completely fresh and any of the old configuration files, temp files, any other sort of junk that has been accumulated in the back end of the system will not get carried over to Windows 10. So here's your choice. If you wanna keep everything, upgrade. If you are happy to delete everything and start fresh, say custom. If as I said, I recommend doing a fresh installation. It may be good to just go back into your earlier version of Windows and update all of those um, pieces of software. If you've got software, data, get all that stuff copied to have to, perhaps to a USB stick and then come back and then do this. Because doing a custom will require you to go and install all of your applications again and copy all your data back. So just be aware of that. So custom uh, will remove the whole lot. Now, because I like to do a fresh install, I like to go and delete this. Now you can right here, click on next, but then you may have some residual stuff from your earlier operating system, okay? If you wanna do that, just be safe, just click on next. I generally recommend deleting it. So select it, select delete. It will delete that whole partition. It'll now say drive zero unallocated space, which means there is no actual partition on here. I'm selecting my drive, 232 gig, that looks good. 
and select next. The process of installing Windows is now commencing. So this is gonna take a little bit of time. It's gonna copy the Windows files. It's then gonna get things ready, installing some final features, install some updates, and then it'll finish up. So this could take uh, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes. It could take up to an hour. It really depends on the speed of your computer. So we'll check back. We'll let this go through. Do not interrupt this process. Let it run through and do what it needs to do. And we'll check back once this is done. So after a bit of time, and after a, maybe a one or two restarts of your computer, you are almost there. So now we just select the region that is relevant for you. I'm gonna leave that as default. Happy to leave that as is, the keyboard layer. We don't want a second keyboard layer. We can leave that skipped. It's gonna now ask me to connect to a Wi-Fi network. So if you do have a Wi-Fi network at home, uh, this is the best time to do it. Um, once it's connected, you can click on next. How would you like to set up? So it's gonna ask me, are you using this at home? Are you using this in an organization? So it really depends on you and say next. Now we'll note that you may have noticed that as your laptop or desktop or whatever has uh, restarted, um, it may be asking you to you know, press any key to boot again from the USB. Uh, don't do that. Hopefully you haven't done that because otherwise installation goes back from the start. So it may be good uh, to remove the USB stick um, because you know, just in case it starts up automatically. So we don't want it to do that. So on this screen, you need to sign in with Microsoft. So if you do have an existing Microsoft account uh, of some sort, you can throw in the email, the phone number or the Skype ID right into here and click on next. If you don't have one, you can create an account. Now you don't have to do this necessarily. It's sometimes nice to have it. That way everything is in sync and everything is working together and that it's registered with Microsoft. But for now, look, we're not gonna go through those steps. We're gonna just say we want an offline account. We don't actually want to create an account with Microsoft for now. So we're gonna say limited experience. Doesn't really matter too much. Uh, right in here, who is gonna be using this PC? So throw in your name. I'm gonna say, Emilio, create a super memorable password. Secret question, Bob, world, Bob. Use your fingerprint. We don't wanna do that for now. You can do that, which is actually quite nice. If you do have a fingerprint sensor on your laptop, you can do that. Uh, do you want to, activity history, do you wanna do that? Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to have, I think. Sure, we'll use a digital assistant. Uh, do you wanna leave all this stuff on? Uh, you can turn some of this stuff on or off. It really depends on what you want. We'll just leave everything as the default. Now, one other thing as well is that not everything that you've seen during this customization area um, will be exactly like that. Um, it may not be exactly like that. Um, it may be different depending on the version of Windows that you're running. Installation is complete. I did get a warning telling me that uh, I may need to do another restart, but that is really the process. So now I'm here within Windows 10, fully functioning uh, and fully done. Uh, very, very easy to do. And then from here, you can start doing all your configuration and all of your settings as you need to. So there you have it. Hopefully you were able to install Windows 10 onto a computer. My case was a laptop through a USB drive. You've booted it and you've installed it from here and it's all working well. If it isn't, you know, let me know, comment below, let me know. Hopefully we can help you out. Uh, definitely would be up for that. As well as that, please like this video if you did find it helpful. And as always, please remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell to be kept up to date as I release new videos. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.